looks like it's drizzling, unfortunately. Maybe it'll stop because it's actually pretty light. Okay, what was going on today? Lots of updates and stuff like that, I guess, with software. I guess when the phone updated, hopefully there won't be any bugs. Although, interestingly enough, with things like that DJI Go app, apparently there was an update recently. And I think the most interesting thing was this. There's a line here saying, what's new? First it says, fix crashing issues and improves app stability, which is pretty standard, I guess you could say. But then this one says, add local data mode. So that mode is actually meant for things like those commercial enterprise solutions because a lot of people are concerned that when you use these drones, for example, they'll send it back to the company, or in this case, a lot of the fear around Chinese-made drones, for example. So this is supposed to actually restrict any information being sent. I wonder if this is a response to all the news media and stuff like that. Especially with a lot more US-made drones in the competition where they don't require stuff like that, to my knowledge. Again, is it reactive? I guess that's good for the consumers and stuff like that. It gives you a choice. At the same time, I wonder if you can actually have this on because in order to unlock things like those geofencing stuff, you need to send your data back and forth, don't you? you to download the unlocking code and all that. So we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Will this increase consumer confidence, I guess you could say? But for now, that fear and stigma still remains in terms of people being afraid where if they see a drone, they automatically think it's completely zoomed into you, spying and all that, which isn't the case. Although it's kind of interesting reading this one, again, with more police officers using the drone, I've seen more articles highlighting how they use it to their benefit to protect people, and it makes you wonder, will the public be responsive to this in a positive way? Because this one says, drones help North Little Rock police catch criminals in the act. We always think about cops catching criminals with patrol cars or surveillance video, but what about drones? For North Little Rock Police Department, this tool was the reason they caught a criminal on Monday night in the act. Around 10 p.m., officers were called about two suspects breaking into vehicles around the Walnut area. While one suspect got away, the other continued to run several streets over. The officers had a clear eye on them though, thanks to advanced technology. It's what Lieutenant Craig Edwards called a valuable asset. It's just really changed some of the ways we can go after suspects, he said. All it takes is a simple call to air traffic control, and then it's liftoff. I thought in the USA would just use that land software just to get the instant approval and all that. Although for really simple operations, even I feel silly here. For example, like in Canada, where you have to phone in the tower and so forth, when you're just flying so low just because you're in the controlled airspace, for example. I mean, there needs to be a better way. I guess one of the most interesting quotes out of this article, it says, it's not Big Brother stuff. We aren't flying around looking into people's windows. We use this for public safety and for apprehending suspects. Just with what everyone sees in the news, where many times they have news reports and talk shows saying, wow, look at how much you can spy on people with this. It's like, they can't hear a thing. It's like right next to them, like, yeah, right. Would this actually help? Apparently, in terms of comments and stuff, you can read here from some people. I don't think it does. Like here it says, it's not Big Brother, it's public safety. And it says, how Aurelian even the new speak. And it says, violation of the oath to protect constitution and bill of rights. Or even more, great new policing tool. All we need now is crime seeking missiles. Problem solved. So in general, I don't think that's helping so far in terms of things like hysteria and all that. I still personally think the only real way to reduce all the hysteria and all that is either with huge mainstream entertainment mediums, people need to get used to it in that sense, or they need to just see it in person or try it in person themselves. They need to see more people flying it around in various public spaces, showing them what it's like because it requires massive education just in general. When all people do is watch news reports of things crashing, people saying it spies on you. One of my best personal examples is still, for example, going hiking and then some people when they see it, they're like, oh no, this thing's gonna go crazy. It's gonna hit me. It's gonna kill somebody. But by the time you launch it up in the air, they see how stable it is. They look at the footage, then they're like, wow. And as I mentioned before, they're like, when can you come next time? We wanna get footage like this again. So you need to actually get out there and be a little interactive, I guess you could say. And for other stuff I quickly read, just seeing everything's gonna go back to normal or not, I guess the first vaccine was received here or given, it says 64 year old residential care aide is the first person in BC to receive COVID-19 vaccine. We'll see if that changes anything in terms of shutdowns and all that. And with that thought, the other interesting thing I read was in relation to how a lot of people have to work at home during these times. And Canada's going to introduce some kind of, I guess, easy tax credit for people who work from home. Normally this is meant more for people that are, say, I don't know, self-employed or something, that way you can write off expenses. 
But here, apparently they're making it really easy for Canadians to register for this this year. So as it says here, each employee working from home who meets the eligibility criteria can use a temporary flat rate method to calculate the deduction for home expenses. To use this method to claim the home office expense you paid, you must meet all of the following conditions. One, you worked from home in 2020 due to COVID-19 pandemic. You worked more than 50% of the time from home for a period of at least four consecutive weeks in 2020. You are only claiming home office expenses and are not claiming any other employment expenses. Your employer did not reimburse you for all your home office expense. So if you do all that, it says you can claim $2 for each day you work from home during that period. You can then also claim any additional days you worked at home in 2020 due to COVID-19 pandemic. And it says the maximum amount that can be claimed is $400 per individual. This method can only be used for the 2020 tax year. So yeah, I guess they're making it really easy and it says here, you do not have to calculate the size of your workspace, keep supporting documents, and your employer does not have to complete and sign a T2200S or form T2200. So I guess that's a benefit for people who are forced to work from home, so you get to write off some stuff I guess. Okay, I guess the rain's definitely not stopping, it's pouring even more. <laughs> I guess it's time for the archive.
See you guys later.